Now is the part where we explore the different kinds of images that lenses can form. Okay, one dichotomy, one little category of images that you can form are real versus virtual image. And the best way to describe this is actually to just draw a picture. So let's imagine that we have a converging lens like this, right? And, you know, as always, we have our little line through the center of it. And we have a focal length. So there's a focal length here and a focal length here. And so let's imagine that we have an image, or sorry, an object that is right outside the focal length, okay? And as you know from your special rays, you're going to get one ray, one special ray that leaves here and goes through the focal length, right? And you're going to have another ray that goes through the center, right? And they meet right here. And then this over here is going to be the location of the image. So this is image and this is object. Okay, and those light rays, so let's say I have an eyeball here observing this, right? These light rays are going to continue on and get and go into the light of uh, the eyeball as if, you know, there is actually genuinely an image here radiating that light. It's kind of cool, right? This lens just created the illusion that there is light radiating from this point and not that point. Okay, now this is what we call a real image. And why is it real? It's real because it's actually light coming, emanating from this point that is getting into your eyes, right? And so you're like, how, wait, how, what are you talking about? Like, you know, how, how can you ever see an image where it's not that actual point emanating the light? You'll see in a second with the virtual image. But for right now, just notice this image here is formed by actual beams of light converging at that single point. Okay, so that's a real image. Now, let's take a similar example, again, a converging lens, like this, right? So let's put our little center line, okay? And then instead of having the object outside the focal length, I'm gonna have the object inside the focal length this time. So the object is gonna be here, okay? FYI, this is the setup for a magnifying glass. This is how a magnifying glass is, right? For a magnifying glass, you want to put the lens up close to the object so that it's inside the focal length of that object, and you're going to see the cool thing that happens here. Well, I do one special uh, ray, and that goes parallel to the lens, and then goes through the focal length, right? And then I do another special ray that goes straight to the center. Okay, what do you see is different here? Well, it's a converging lens, but these rays don't converge, right? They're actually diverging, okay? So now if I have an eye over here, and I'm taking a look at this whole thing, okay, I, what I'm really seeing is it appears as though this light these light rays are emanating from some point over here, okay? So it's like a trick where this lens bends this light in such a way that if I follow those rays back, it looks like the, the object wasn't here. It looks like it's actually here, okay? And so notice this, uh, this so this is the object. And this is the image. This image isn't actually formed by actual rays of light converging at that point, okay? It just looks like it. So that's why we call it virtual, okay? I hope this distinction is clear. In, in, in this real image here, we actually have genuine beams of light converging at this point to form the image, okay? In this case, we have f beams of light that are coming out, and you actually have to trace them back. The illusion that they trace back to this single point creates this kind of illusion of an image over here, right? Notice this one is much bigger than this one, right? Hence the magnification. So this virtual image has been magnified 
that is why a magnif magnifying glass works, right? You create, for a magnifying glass, you create a virtual image that appears larger than the original image, right? Whereas in this case, this would be more like how a movie projector works or a slide projector. Um, if, I, if I just erase all this here and I put a screen, see I put a screen, right? Then that is actually gonna be light projected on that screen so that let's say this is a slide of, I don't know, a beautiful horse in a bucolic pasture, okay? You will have this object then showing this horse over here. Notice it's gonna be upside down. So when you actually, <laughs> this is an actually interesting problem with, uh, with real images is that they are inverted. And that brings us to the next like dichotomy or category of, uh, of, of images. And that is erect or upright and inverted. Okay, so it turns out that real images Okay, real images, and you can go to the next slide here that says the difference between inverted and upright images. Um, real images are always inverted. All right, that's just the way that light works when it goes through a lens. Okay, now virtual images tend to be upright. Okay, that's the way that it works for the, the geometry of the light rays. Um, so if you have a real image, you can be assured that it's going to be an inverted image, right? If you have a virtual image, you can be assured that it's going to be upright, okay? In other words, if we look at that, you know, a bug in a, micro, uh, a magnifying glass, we don't see it upside down. We see it the right way, right? Um, whereas slides in a slide projector, you actually have to flip the image um, in order to see it upright as it's supposed to be seen, okay? So that is the overview of the different kinds of images that lenses can form. They can either form real and inverted images or virtual and inverted images. Okay? Or sorry, virtual and upright. Um, uh, sometimes upright or erect, they, the uh, textbooks will use those interchangeably. Um, so those are the kinds of images. When we get back to the next video, we're going to talk about, we're going to just look at different sort of lens situations and how changing the location of the object is going to change the location of the image and how changing the location of the object can change the kind of image that the lens will form. Okay, so the next video is going to be basically a crash course in all the different situations that you can have with respect to both converging and diverging lenses. I'll see you there.